How are you? I hope you're having a great day. When one of my subscribers asked if anyone else with fibromyalgia found themselves unable to do much for days after a bath, I found myself on a quest. If I make my bath too hot, then I'm lightheaded and have to relax for hours after my bath. But oh, how my muscles feel better. Apparently, there may be some of you who have a different experience, so I wanted to find out why. I mean, in one hand, it's probably obvious because we all have different overlapping conditions. But I went to a website called The Fibro Guy. I've linked the article below. And on that website, they stated, some people with fibromyalgia may enjoy a cooler bath or shower, even cold. Now, for me, there's no way. I've been sensitive to cold for years, so you couldn't even pay me to take a cold shower. Because in general, people with fibromyalgia have a different physiological response to cold. But cold water can have an antidepressant effect and improve cognitive function. It can also give total pain relief, apparently, for about 90 minutes after a shower, a cold shower. However, there is one thing in that article that stood out to me. The writer of the article stated, a large percentage of those walking around diagnosed with fibromyalgia are misdiagnosed. About half are either on the hypermobility spectrum or have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Because of this, they may have an extreme sensitivity to heat where they'll get a lot of blood pooling to the legs, extreme fatigue, and possibly faint because of the soft tissue flexibility. In the general population, about 3% of individuals have joint hypermobility, but its prevalence may actually be higher. So do you enjoy a hot bath, even hot tub soaking? Does it relax you and soothe your muscles? Or do you experience such an extreme response that you're unable to do anything for days? Well, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Perhaps this is the answer, or there may be a simple answer. We're just all different. The purpose of this discussion is to examine the differences between fibromyalgia and joint hypermobility. There we go. In a study about joint hypermobility and fibromyalgia, 8% of people with fibromyalgia also had joint hypermobility, whereas 6% without fibromyalgia had joint hypermobility. This study involved 88 participants and 56 met the criteria for widespread pain resembling fibromyalgia. The data from that study indicated that there were those diagnosed the ACR criterion for fibromyalgia. But then there were some participants who exhibited fibromyalgia symptoms clinically, but did not meet the ACR criterion. It's believed that they actually had joint hypermobility and were misdiagnosed as having fibromyalgia. Joint hypermobility is a connective tissue disease characterized by joint instability, chronic pain, 
and minor skin changes. It shares many of the clinical features of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, the hypermobility type. And when this occurs, proper medical care isn't given. Joint hypermobility was first recognized in 1967. It's commonly recognized by people who are extraordinarily flexible. They're often labeled as double jointed, can touch their thumbs and fingers to their forearms, hyperextend their elbows, wrists and knees, beginning in early life. And often this leads to joint pain and early onset osteoarthritis. It's believed to have a genetic component with environmental factors that contribute to the development. Joint hypermobility may play a prominent role in the pathogenesis of pain and fibromyalgia, or perhaps it's joint hypermobility and not fibromyalgia. The overlap of symptoms between these two conditions is shown here. What I don't hear is stiffness, a very common complaint in fibromyalgia. In joint hypermobility, morning stiffness that lasts longer than 30 minutes is rare. And people with fibromyalgia often have stiffness all day long, especially after sitting and then rising. Is that your experience? It's mine. So according to a 2004 study, you should ask yourself these questions. Do you consider yourself double jointed? Can you now or could you ever place your hands flat on the floor without bending your knees? Can you now or could you ever bend your thumb to touch your forearm? As a child, did you amuse your friends? by contorting your body into strange shapes? Or could you do the splits? As a child or teenager, did your shoulder or kneecap dislocate on more than one occasion? Positive responses to two of those questions have a sensitivity of 84% and specificity, 85% for joint hypermobility syndrome according to the Baton score, or it could be Biton, not sure. In addition, joints are examined by a physician for tenderness, swelling, redness, and deformities. They also need to rule out other conditions. Pain becomes worse with physical activity or repetitive movements. Muscle weakness is a key factor and fatigue is one of the most common complaints and can be confused with chronic fatigue syndrome. Sleep apnea is not reported in hypermobility syndrome, but Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome are predisposed to it. What is proposed by researchers is that due to soft tissue injury from joint instability, the joints are overloaded and further soft tissue injury that manifests as arthralgias and diffuse musculoskeletal pain makes it not difficult for physicians to diagnose fibromyalgia instead of joint hypermobility. There's a greater risk of knee injury with joint hypermobility or possibly other joints as well. As you soak in hot water, the blood flow increases and the muscles begin to loosen up on their own. For people with fibromyalgia, it's easier after a hot bath to stretch those muscles that are already warmed up. Walking or biking can be easier and you'll have less painful muscles on active days. 
this is why water exercises are so good for us. It's that gentle and low impact of the water, as well as the buoyancy that water creates. There's less stress on the joints, and the benefits of a workout that increases the pulse rate provide additional benefits as blood flow is increased to parts of the body. In addition to this, hot baths or soaking in a hot tub can help reduce sleep disturbances, which can help reduce fatigue. And that's why I take a bath at night. It helps ease my body into a resting state because after a long day, I'm tense, and that isn't the state I need to be in to relax and fall asleep. When you immerse yourself in water, up past your chest, with your head out, of course, you can feel the influence on your lung capacity and oxygen intake. When the water is warmer, our heart is beating faster and your oxygen intake is improved. And if there is steam involved, it can clear your sinuses and chest. And just think about pain and inflammation. Submerging yourself in water can reduce pain and inflammation and calm the nervous system. Well, then that can reduce stress and anxiety and improve our mood. The warm water raises our body temperature and I'm left with the feeling of calmness and serenity. So any stress reliever that works that well and is that easy to do is something that I want in my life. It doesn't make me feel horrible for days, but how about you? But if you have chronic fatigue syndrome or maybe fertility issues, it said that bathing in cooler temperatures may be more beneficial. And this includes people with hypermobility. If you have hypermobility, ice can help a new injury by reducing swelling, inflammation, and pain. Or use ice if you know that you've overdone it that day to prevent pain from occurring. Nerve pain and joint pain may respond better to ice or coldness than heat. Try those flexible ice packs or put crushed ice in a plastic bag or use a bag of frozen peas, whatever works for you. But there are many of you who do not respond well to cold. So you just have to find out what works for you. You can get increased pain and burning after just a few minutes of cold. You could also try alternating heat and cold, especially if you have swelling or an acute injury. Heat will increase the blood flow to that area and help heal any injury. And then the cold is used to push the increase of fluid out. But always use heat first, then cold. Just listen to your body. There's no right or wrong answer here. Fibromyalgia and hypermobility can coexist. Did you answer yes to two of those five questions? So hypermobility patients are able to move in ways with ease that those without hypermobility cannot. Do you think you could have hypermobility? Or have you already been diagnosed with it? People with fibromyalgia, as I said, suffer with many different illnesses and diseases. So if you have MS and fibro, you may notice that hot summer days affect your symptoms negatively. If you have migraines and headaches, you may notice that changes in temperature, humidity, and air pressure can really trigger a headache. 
And if you have arthritis, hot weather makes your pain worse. So these would also factor in to whether a hot bath will work for you. If you can't take hot baths, try a cooler one. I remember when my doctor recommended that I freeze a water bottle and roll that on the bottom of my feet when my plantar fasciitis was out of control. But within a few seconds, my feet were burning. I couldn't do it. So listen to your body. If cooler baths are what makes you feel better, then do that. It's okay. And on the days that I wash my hair, which is usually two or three times a week, I'm exhausted. The energy that it took to scrub my head, rinse it, scrub it again, rinse it, put conditioner on, rinse it. It doesn't sound like much for somebody who doesn't have fibromyalgia, but for those of us who do, I think you can probably relate. I used to take showers in the morning and I fell one day in the shower trying to shave my legs. I don't have very good balance. That was scary with the water running and I could, I struggled to get up. I ended up having to open the shower door and crawl out. It's the only way I could get up. After that, it scared me. I'm able to take baths. I can get in and out of a bathtub just fine. But maybe if you have arthritis in your knees, that's not going to be fun or easy for you. So please. Just find whatever it is that works for you. And I'm sorry if I made anyone feel like they had to take a hot bath just to feel better. So please keep posting. I'm learning along with you. I hope you learn something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. And in the writer, the purpose of this is also had joint hypermob, also had joint hap, who met the ACR criterion, proper metal can touch their thumbs and fingers to their thumb, or, per, or perhaps it's joint hypermit so according to a th and in and in uh, now 